I just decided that I'm going to make a vlog. So that's what I'm doing. My mother made me a G and T, uh, and then sat down for like two minutes with me and then just left me alone with this G and T. And, um, I feel like I don't want to drink this gin and tonic by myself. And if I am vlogging, it kind of feels like I am with someone. So then it's a little bit less Dad. I am with my dog, um, but she's not the best conversation. Even though I really haven't had very much liquor to drink yet, I haven't had anything to drink in a while, and so this is really just like hitting me a little different right now. Currently, I am reading actually not very many things. Um, I... I'm reading The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde, which I am very much enjoying. That's on ebook. And that is it, actually. I just finished a couple of books uh, in the last couple of days. Um, so, and I haven't really decided what's coming up. I think I have an ebook um, for Real Life by Brandon. What's his name? Oh, shoot. I think it's going to win The Booker. His name is Brandon something. I keep wanting to say Sanderson, but it's not, not, not him. You know the one. It's orange. There's a bird on it. I think that I have an ebook reserve coming in for that in a couple of days from the library. Um, but other than that, no plans. I have been wearing real pants for like several hours now and my body cannot handle this. So I am going to change into my pajamas. There was more that I was going to say, and I was like, oh, I'm going to vlog. And I was like, I'll, I can say all this stuff, but I forget what it was going to be. Welcome to the vlog. Cheers. If you're watching at home, I hope you clink with me. It's like we're drinking together. As you can see, it took me like a full hour to change my clothes because I just can't focus on things. I don't know what just happened in the last 60 minutes of my life. Also, I noticed that I had a black smudge on my face during that whole introductory clip. So cool. Uh, anyway, um, I'm going to make a stir fry right now. And um, I also have plans tonight to have a virtual movie night with my friend who lives in Nevada. So that's exciting. Um, although it's going to require me to stay up much later than I have been. I've legit been going to bed at 8.30. Because it gets dark so early now that I'm just like, what's the point of staying up later when I can just be sleeping? Am I depressed? I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> Good morning. Ooh, that was my microwave. I'm so tired. Uh, I got on FaceTime with my friend and we didn't even watch the movie. We just talked for like four and a half straight hours and um, I didn't end up getting into bed until like after midnight and so I only got like five hours of sleep because the cat wakes me up really early. Um, and my voice is so tired, but obviously it was worth it. It was so great to talk to her. This friend, she was, um, a coworker in Prague and, um, then we ended up living together for, um, like eight months or so. She was my roommate and, um, I haven't really talked to her that much over the last year or so. So it was just like so great to reconnect. And it also just like kind of helped me check in with myself and like remind myself that um, even though life isn't A plus, 
right now. The choices that I've made over the last few years have enabled me to do things that I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. You know, like sometimes um, I keep feeling like, I mean, like capitalism is so like deeply ingrained that like we measure our like self-worth based on like our capitalist gains. I keep seeing like people on social media who are my age who are like doing much better financially. And I think like, well, I shouldn't have fucked off to Europe for four years. Um, I should have just like started a career that would make me a lot of money, but that's not a good choice. Where did this come from? Oh yeah, because I never would have met Miranda in a million years if I had not gone to Prague and like tons of other people. So, <laughs> um, I am gonna like shower and get dressed and no plans for the day really. We'll just kind of see, see where the wind takes me. Soapy, you don't want it. Hello. Um, didn't really do any check-ins today. It was a pretty lazy day. I ran a few errands with my mom, and we bought a skeleton, which shockingly is not the silliest purchase that we've made in the last six months. I think that really tells you something about how quarantine is going. Are people still saying quarantine? We're not really quarantined anymore or locked down, but it's just, you know, you're all living it. You know what it is. I also finished listening to The Gateway, which is a podcast from Gizmodo, which I binged over the last couple of days, thanks to my friend Kim's recommendation. Um, it's about a spiritual guru named Teal Swan who makes like YouTube videos and Instagram content just kind of like spiritual influencer is kind of more what I would call her but she has this whole um like basically theory of psychology that she uses to treat people to you know interesting effect and like low-key she's a cult leader it was really interesting if you're into cults or true crime, there's something in there for you. Uh, it's a couple years old, but it definitely held up and was super entertaining. I started listening to the audiobook of Every Heart a Doorway by Shauna McGuire. Not sure about it. I don't think that the audiobook is like the best. Um, and that obviously can influence your experience of a book, but that's just what I just saw that it was available for my library and I was like, this will take me. 10 seconds. Um, so that's why I'm trying it out this way. The idea behind it has always been very interesting to me, but I, um, I've always been a bit hesitant about this series just because I'm not sure a series of novellas is necessarily the best way to tell a story. So, you know, jury's still out on that one. I don't think I'm going to check in again today. I'm just going to cook dinner with my mom and then probably watch TV with my mom. So that's all. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you tomorrow, Saturday. Don't know what's going to happen. We'll find out together. I want for this video. Alexa. That's better. As you can see, it's like pretty autumnal weather right now, which I'm not gonna lie, I'm not mad about. Um, and I just feel like doing some fall activities. So right now I'm gonna bake just some chocolate chip cookies. Really simple. It's actually pretty warm outside, but it's cold inside and like dark. So I, it's fine. Baking is not an explicitly fall activity anyway. It's just like that's when I start to want to bake a lot. So uh, yeah, join me. Also, The Princess Diaries 2 is on TV, which is always a good time. Frank, you're
The key to nice soft chocolate chip cookies is melted butter, I think. I'm not entirely sure. I just know that I've tried a lot of recipes and ones with melted butter tend to be softer. But I actually like to take it a step further and um, brown my butter. It just makes it, give it, gives it a little like nutty flavor, I think I would describe it as. If you wanna try that, you can obviously Google how to make brown butter or you can take a risk and follow my instructions, which is just to keep stirring your butter over medium heat until um, the little like solid bits kind of turn brown, but like right when they just start to turn brown and then immediately take it off the heat because it can burn very quickly and we don't want that. Okay, so this movie obviously is incredible, but it's also so surreal. Mia has a bridal shower and invites children. She has like her two adult friends and then children. Then at that party, the maids of the palace do a little song and dance performance about being exploited by the ruling class. Can't you hear the bells are shouting? Thanks go to your shores. Okay. But the part where Julie Andrews sings always makes me cry. Um, because I'm a sap. Later that same evening. I just finished Every Heart a Doorway and it was okay. I like the idea and there's definitely a lot of creativity to it um, in the imagery from the other worlds, particularly. Um, but there was just so much exposition and it's done in such a clunky way. And I really feel like if she had decided to write it as an entire novel instead of like these, this, these tiny novellas, um, I just would have given the story and the characters more room to breathe. As it is, it's kind of like, Here's a character. The character will tell you their life story in several long paragraphs. And then we'll move on to the next character who will do the same. And um, that's just not really my favorite way for exposition and characterization to happen. Um, I think it could have been integrated into the story a bit more seamlessly. And also the writing style is just not, not really to my taste. That's a personal thing though. I know a lot of people like it. So, you know, I'm glad I read it because I've been interested in the series for a while, but I don't think I'll continue with the series. Okay, I know it's really dark here, so the footage is gonna be grainy, but I just had to share this. I came down to the living room to do yoga this morning and the cat just like, he has a radar for it. Anytime I'm gonna do yoga down here, he just like comes down. And he like really wants to be in the room while I'm doing it. But then it like really triggers him, I guess, because like I'm not paying enough attention to him. I don't know. But like if he's going to scratch me, usually it's going to be while I'm doing yoga. And so that's not great for like the <laughs> relaxation factor. Um, and uh, but the weird thing is it's only when I do it down here. If I can do it in my bedroom with him in the room and he'll just like chill. So there he goes. What are you doing? <laughs> Leave my yoga mat alone. Oh, 
boy, today has just been, I don't know, like a day where I really can't focus on anything. Um, I'm very tired, which I realize that this vlog is just a series of me like logging how tired I am. I actually went to like went back to bed after my cat woke me up and I just woke up so much like groggier and uh, not good anyway, but it's afternoon now. I'm eating my like seventh cookie probably of the day. Um, and it's not for you. It has chocolate. I'm very sorry to hear that. Anyway, to hear that, to inform you. So, I ordered a copy of Pumpkin Heads to send to my sister because her birthday is in October. And uh, what better October birthday gift? Scout, stop it. You, you need to settle down. You're a good girl. Anyway, um, and I was about to wrap it up then I realized that I actually want to read this again right now. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. I, I must admit I've been guilty of this before. Give, getting a gift a book as a gift for someone and then reading it before I give it to them. I'm just gonna be very careful not to break this spine. I do have to say I'm a little bit disappointed because when I read this last year, Scout, um, yeah, so when I, <laughs> when I read this last year, um, I got it as a paperback as well from my local library in Scotland, and the quality of the actual, like, the physical quality of the book, Scout, you're gonna get stuck. What is your problem right now? Lie down. That's sitting, but, okay, can you, can you chill out? So the physical quality of the UK edition was just so much higher, like really nice, like matte finish, like weighted paper, whereas this is much more like magazine-y. I don't know if it's because this is like, you know, like a third or fourth printing or what, but it's just not quite as nice as what I wanted it to be. Hopefully... Louisa will have, will have received this package by the time I post this vlog, otherwise that will be a, kind of spoil the surprise. Enjoy the reading montage. Do you want to come up on the couch? Will that make you feel better? Come on. Don't tell my mom. What are you looking at? It's the cookie, isn't it? This is a book, it's not food. I just realized I, um, it's been a year since I read this, so some people are new viewers. I read this, like, last fall, and it's very cute. I'm sure you've seen it around. It's about two friends who are seniors in high school, and they work every autumn at a pumpkin patch. And, uh, they're, like, really close friends, but they don't really talk during the rest of the year. And it's their last night at the pumpkin patch, and they decide to have a little adventure. It's very cute, cute art style, um, very like autumnal, good food, yeah. And uh, today, it's not like fall weather, like it's actually kind of hot, but aesthetically it looks very fall, it's like gloomy. So um, I'm just kind of in the mood for it and also obviously I have to, if I'm gonna read this and then send it to my sister, I should do it soon. So there we go. actually make me feel more excited for fall as I said a couple days ago or yesterday whenever that was I wasn't that excited for it but now I'm thinking about like ooh, our local ice cream farm will do pumpkin ice cream and I can do a corn maze somewhere and bonfires and all that so um thank you pumpkin heads for making me excited for that also my friend read this a few weeks ago a while ago sometime and she said that uh, she thought it would make a cute, like, TV series with, like, little, like, 10-minute episodes, like, Over the Garden Wall or something. 
And I must say, I agree. So if you are a television producer and you want to hire me to write that, hit me up. <laughs> because that, that's what I am. I'm a television writer. Okay, I'm going to go wrap this up now so I can put it in the package to go to Louisa. And then, I don't know, I guess I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some, like, crafts. That'll be fun.